All right, we're live. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of The Quit List. Today, I want you to lift those fingers in the air. Get them up, get them up, get them up. We want you to hit the button to share. Share this video with your friends, with all the people who you love in your life. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of The Ink Spot. Today on the show, I'm joined by my guest, attorney Gavin Jackson. Attorney Jackson is an entrepreneur and businessman. Attorney Jackson, welcome to the program. Always good to be with you, good brother. We're also joined by Jeremiah Kamara. Jeremiah is a filmmaker and an author. Jeremiah, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks uh, for having me. Always good to be here as well. And we're joined by Dr. Gerard McClendon. Dr. G, welcome to the quit list. It's good to be here. God bless you. Issue number one, issue number one, race wars. Should black people be arming themselves? Former Fox News commentator Bill O'Reilly once insisted that white Americans despise the Black Lives Movement. Recently, a neo-Nazi was shot and killed after he plotted to bomb a hotel. No, actually, he, pl he plotted to bomb a hospital in Kansas City. When he was questioned by the FBI, he told them that he wanted to create enough chaos to kickstart a revolution. He referred to himself as a Boogaloo boy. In other words, the Boogaloo movement wants to launch a violent campaign against the government so that they can start a second civil war. I want to go to you, Dr. McClendon. What do you think about this? Do you believe that the United States is on the verge of a second civil war? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, that's really been happening since the civil rights era of the late 60s, early 70s. This pot has been boiling for a while. It just took the right leader, that being the current president, to make it fashionable to hate black people. You know, we're in a situation now where uh, an armed gunman can walk by the military after having shot a person, put his hands up and look totally innocent. You know, it's something I talk about all the time, how the most innocent person in the United States who is guilty is a white woman, because if she starts crying, if she starts saying they hurt me, she's going to be the one that's innocent, even though she's the perpetrator. We're seeing that happen with white males now where they're on the offense. But what ends up happening is they're protected by the government. That's the problem we have in this country. And mentally, sociologically, genocycolinguistically, we're looking at a race war in this country. It's happening. It's, it's, All right. it's on. It's on. Attorney Jackson, genocycolinguistically, which I have no idea what the heck that means. You could explain that to me later. Dr. Jackson, do you believe we're on the verge of a race war in America? I think we're, we're definitely trying to get there. One of the things that we have to realize about racial strife is a lot of it comes from poor people who feel like their whiteness is the only strength that they have. But the flip side of that coin is rich people exploiting this psychological weakness in poor white people for their own benefit. For instance, blacks and whites used to be in unions together. And when white industrious realized, well, I can crack the union by bringing in poor black workers that would break the strike, let me make sure that these white people and black people really hate each other, these working white people and black people really hate each other so that they can never join together in a union. The racism and hate was real, but there's somebody exploiting it and throwing fuel on the fire for their own benefit. I agree with uh, Dr. Gerard McClendon, we have that today. The current president, who is a racist, is banning the, the flames of racism because he believes that that is the only way that he can stay in power. So inciting absolute chaos, inciting a civil war is to his benefit. So he's fanning those flames. So what do you think about that? Um, Jeremiah, real quick. Uh, the current president said that when the looting starts, the shooting starts. What is he talking about? 
I don't know what he's talking I never know what Donald Trump is talking about. <laughs> you know, but uh, I, I, I guess I'm the odd man out here. I'm not buying the fact that there's going to be a race war or civil war. Uh, which one are you talking about? Oh, yeah, you're talking about the one that CNN, Fox, and MSNBC are promoting. And I think that they're the main promoters of this thing. And generally speaking, I think whites and blacks are, are cool together. Right now, we've got more interracial relationships. you got more... Uh, uh, interactions that are positive between blacks and whites, then you have negative. But when you watch the news, especially Fox, which has made a billion dollars last year, CNN made close to a billion, and MSNBC made close to a billion, their job as an institution is to cherry pick and report the bloodiest, most sensational thing that they can find. And I think that we uh, have bought Jeremiah, into that type of thing. Jeremiah, so are you actually saying that you believe Fox News, CNN, are trying to promote a race war? Absolutely, I am because the news is 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 first of all we're talking about an institution that's profit driven, and they're not going to make profit uh, talking about good things. Listen, we're talking about the news. The news has to have balance. So you have all of this blood and all this violence and all of these race racial things that they're talking about. In order to be balanced, you would have to report the hundreds of thousands or maybe even millions of interactions between blacks and whites that are positive. They don't report those things. I have a business, 35% of my business is white. And we're, you know, pretty, for the most part, we're, hello, how you doing? We're very civil to one another. But when you watch the news and you keep these things in the forefront of your mind, you think that they're out to get you. And this so, is the uh, same Dr. thing. Dr. McClendon, do you buy this? Do you buy this argument that Jeremiah is making that Race relations are pretty good from his standpoint. Well, I mean, I'm you not know, maybe, they're pretty good, but you one on one for the most part, yes. Uh, but but there's the difference between the overt and the covert. I do agree with Jeremiah in terms of the news, especially the political pundits, as well as the so-called news, be it Fox. Uh, and be it MSNBC, they're trying to pit people against each other. That's all for ratings. I mean, you know, if, if you want high market share, you know, if you're bringing in three million people a night on your show and it suddenly gets bumped up to 3.5 or 4 million a night, you can raise your advertising revenue. How do you do that? You get that by getting people to disagree with each other. Blacks hate whites, whites hate blacks, Hispanics build a wall. And so Jeremiah is right in terms of uh, race being polarized. But as I mentioned before, genopsycholinguisticide, the killing of a people psychologically with words, that's what we see happening in society right now. As an expert on expectations and perceptions of, of language and race, that's all over the board right now. And uh, well, it may be time for uh, black folks to get armed. It's okay, that's where we wanna go. And that's what I really, really find out about. But I wanna ask you this question, Gavin, before we actually explore this idea that black people ought to be arming themselves. The question is, do you actually believe that race relations are at such a point where we are okay with each other. It seems to me that, it, especially in the past, I don't know, six months or so, that tensions have been continuing to grow exponentially. Well, I, I agree with with Jeremiah. So you know, it, it must be must be a lucky day. I'm gonna go play a pick six or something. I agree, uh, 100 with Jeremiah that a lot of it is news based. We forgot that before Donald Trump and his news organizations started to infect the story with the violence that black people and white people together were protesting the death of George Floyd, the murder of George Floyd. You had tens of thousands of people marching in Berlin, Germany, in Berlin, over police violence against black folks in the United States. I'm not saying that relationships are great, but I am agreeing that how you can cover what is going on? You don't cover that in New York while people were protesting. Some Muslims took a break to do their prayers and they were surrounded by black and white people giving them the space to pray in the middle of the street. That's not a good news story, but that happened. A well, good about, news story is, and I mean, and I'm not saying this stuff isn't real. I'm saying we have to be careful to not be 
I'm going to call it emotionally manipulated. I don't I don't have the good scientific words. I'm going to call it being emotionally ma manipulated by a news cycle and by a president that wants us to be up in arms. Well, what about the what about the uh, go ahead, go ahead, Drew. No, no. I mean, I agree. You know, uh, when you can spawn and create and birth discontent that automatically makes people react. And when you react, you do it out of mindlessness as opposed to mindfulness. Okay, when let me get this straight. Are you guys actually trying to convince me here that people are not protesting, pe black people are not at the end of their rope because of all of the violence, all of the uh, disharmony, all of the racial. They're, they're absolutely at the end of their. They're absolutely at the end of their rope. But I want to make sure that we also place some of the blame. So this, so this seventeen-year-old kid from Illinois who yeah, got but, in but his not car. The blame. I'm, I'm not. I'm not talking about the blame. I, the question is, um, are we on the verge of a race war? I'm not saying who's at fault. Um, we can surmise who's at fault. The question is. Our tensions so great in this country that it is inevitable. Nothing's inevitable. I think that we are trying to look. I think that President Trump is trying to create this war, but nothing's inevitable. It's actually conversations like the Quit Doctor and other shows that are the counter programming to what people are trying to create. But I don't think it's inevitable. No. OK, Dr. McClendon, go ahead. See, look like you wanted to weigh in on that. No, I agree. I mean, you know, uh, when you're looking at a society that was created on polarization, yes. all right? So if the country's built, right? Let's do Trail of Tears. Let's bring smallpox to blankets and Native Americans. Let's not let women vote. Uh, even up to 1970 in this country, man, a woman couldn't have a credit card without her husband or father's consent. So, so the, this country is built on polarization. And with the, the so-called presidential leader that we have in office right now, that fertilization and watering has made that particular plant grow more and more. And people are comfortable with it. That's what's sad. They're Jeremiah, Com Jeremiah Kamara, do you believe that Black people ought to be arming themselves? Arming themselves, listen, there are too many white people that are dependent on black people to work for them. There are too many black people that are dependent on white people to work for them. There are too many black people in nursing homes and hospitals that are dependent upon white people to take care of them and vice versa. We are interdependent upon one another. We arm ourselves and, and have a race war I mean, wh where do we think we're going to be with this race war? What I'm saying is we are allowing the media to dictate the direction of where our attention is going. I don't know why we pay so much attention to Donald Trump, to a person with such a low IQ and so, so a, person, a, a person that's just not well read at all. We're paying attention to his every move. I'm a busy man. I own a business. I deal with the youth. I don't have time to sit and watch the news all day long. I don't have time to worry about what Trump said and what Trump did and what Trump didn't say. And I don't know why we're so focused on that. So I don't think that this whole race war is a, is a good idea. I don't think we should, if you arm yourself, arm yourself for your own solar system, for your family. Yeah, I'm armed at my house because I've got a family. I've got grandchildren. So absolutely I'm armed. But in terms of this race war, you know, I don't have these issues because I, you know, the energy that you get, that you project is the energy that you often receive. I'm in the business. My wife owns the business. We don't have these issues with whites. I'm not worried about some poor dunk white man with a Confederate flag in the back of his truck talking about what he's going to do. That's one person out of millions who are not going to do it. But the news cherry picks and focuses on these negative things. Okay, and um, you have so that balance we got to wrap up. Move. We got to wrap up topic number one. But I, I do want to find out just really quick. I want to. I want you to respond to this, Attorney Jackson. There is this organization called In Fact, uh, N F A C, not effing around coalition. This is a group of. This is actually a black militia, and what they do is they dress in. Black, they cover their faces with face masks and they carry automatic assault weapons. 
they go out and they are there to protect the black community, according to the leader of the group. What do you think about groups like that? So you know, I don't have any I don't have any problem with groups like that as long as they are following the laws of whatever jurisdiction they're in. One of the things that we have to do is always avail ourselves of being full citizens of this country. We've been treated like second class citizens. But if you're a citizen of this country, you have the right to avail yourself of the Second Amendment in accordance to whatever your local laws are. So if you live in a district that allows open carry, then go ahead and open carry. But I also just want to encourage groups like that to not just arm yourself with weapons if you're comfortable with that. And I agree with it if you're comfortable. Arm yourselves with education. That's also a part of what you should do as an American. Arm yourself with resources. That is, purchase land or invest. Arm yourself with health care. Arm yourself with everything that America has to offer so that you can survive what is going on. And a gun Absolutely. is not going to be the, the only way to do that. All right, before we hit it and quit it, before we hit it and quit it, I want to take a couple of uh, posts from our Facebook friends. Uh, Dwight says, I hope Jeremiah doesn't have a rude awakening. I hope <laughs> Jeremiah does not have a rude awakening. Now, Jeremiah, hold on, bite your tongue. I know you want to. <laughs> I know you want to respond to that, but hold on. Um, Bukhari, put that, put that uh, post up from Bukhari. Bukhari said, outside of a race war, we need to arm ourselves and be able to protect our families. The police seem to have trouble doing that. All right, these are very good comments. Um, we got to hit it and quit it. I wanna to go to Attorney Jackson, hit it and quit it. Hit it means yes, quit it means no. The question is, should black people be arming themselves? Hit it or quit it? I say hit it. If, if you're comfortable with it, go ahead, avail yourself of your rights. Jeremiah. I say hit it and quit it. You know, if you want to do it, do it. If you don't, you don't. I'm, you know, I'm already armed regardless. You know, before all of this, before Trump was in office, I'm armed for, for black folk, for white folk, for anybody who's doing things <laughs> to my family. Dr. McClendon, hit it or quit it. Should yeah. black people be arming themselves? Yeah, I say hit it. You know, if anything, the militia should come to Austin, Auburn, Gresham, Inglewood, Watts, Baltimore. If anything, a black militia should come to to communities that have high disenfranchisement and high murder rates and to protect blacks from other black people. By the way, you guys know two black gangster disciples who were teenagers killed my parents. So as Jeremiah said, I got more problems with black gangster disciples than I do with white supremacists. I mean, it's I mean, just, just, to just to make a quick point, just to make a quick point right there, homicide knocked on my door and told me my nephew had been murdered, okay? It wasn't by anybody carrying a white Confederate flag. That person looked just like me and you. So I've been armed for everybody. Anybody that is a threat to my family, I don't care whether they're white and black, white or black. I'm just saying, stop letting the media dictate the direction of where our attention goes. Issue number two, the NBA boycott. Should sports and athletes remain separate in other words should sports and social issues remain separate are our athletes overstepping their bounds now we know that since 2014 when michael brown was killed there's been at least 400 controversial killings jacob blake was just the latest one in kenosha wisconsin he was shot in the back arm stomach kidney he had to have a small intestines and his colon removed and then when he was in the hospital they handcuffed him to the bed the milwaukee bucks boycotted in the first round of the nba playoffs they decided not to come out of the locker room at the last minute and as a result many of the the in fact the entire nba then canceled all the games that led to a boycott from other leagues including the wnba professional baseball soccer and hockey so the question here and I'm going to hit uh, Dr. McClinton. The question to you is, should sports and social issues remain separate? They're, no, they're joined at the hip. Uh, they have to be conjoined, if anything, because first of all, it, it, look, if, if I'm in a pickup game at a park and I have a social issue I want to blast out there, it's pretty much meaningless. Uh, if I'm a highly paid individual 
who is in the spotlight and I see that my people or people who of, of any stripe who are being disenfranchised or disrespected, that person has a platform. I mean, be it Muhammad Ali, be it Tommy Smith and John Carlos, be it Colin Kaepernick, you know, people pay attention to luminaries, especially athletic luminaries who make a lot of money and who people darn near worship. The two things are joined at the hip, social expression, the First Amendment, and uh, athletics. Joined at the hip, you can't separate them. One Fox commentator said that athletic teams have now become political action committees. What about that, Jackson? Well, actually they have, and I, and I think that's a good thing. I think what we're seeing now, which, which I, I really love, I am, I am a, I'm a huge fan of Ali, uh, Dr. McClendon mentioned Ali because he, he essentially sacrificed the prime of his career, the you know, which is boxers don't have a long career. He sacrificed the prime of his career to make a statement that he believed in and really, by all means, shouldn't have been able to come back. But he did. When Kaepernick kneeled, at first he was kneeling by himself. If as an entire team, if his entire team said we are going to kneel or the entire team, the team that they were playing against said that we are going to kneel, Kaepernick might still be playing today. I just love to see that now it's it's not just one individual on an island by themselves, it's entire teams, it's entire leagues. The fact that the NBA has on the floor of the court, Black Lives Matter, doing a playoff game that millions of people are watching, I believe that's an excellent step forward it's an excellent use of their resources, and, and I just, I applaud it. Real, very quick response to this, Attorney Jackson. Mike Dinka said in relation to Kaepernick and other sports uh, athletes kneeling, he said, if you can't stand for the national anthem, get the hell out of my country. Right. Well, that's just Mike Dicka revealing who he really is. You know, one of the great things about this time is that you never can really get rid of hate. Hate just hides. Hate is feeling strong enough not to have to hide right now. So you get to know like, oh, yeah, no, Mike Dick is a racist. It's, it's good to at least know that. But athletes have always been able to promote what they want as long as it makes money. You can promote whatever brand of shoe you want. You can promote television shows. You can promote cars. Why can't they promote for whatever social issues they want as well? OK, I, I want to come to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, what do you think about the issue just in general? Are athletes crossing the line into political activism? I don't think they are. They have a responsibility. You know, we watch their games. We keep up with their stats. We wear their names, you know, on our on our jerseys. We talk about them at the barbershops. So they're, we're invested in them. They ought to be invested in us. I don't think that sports and politics should be separate. We can't even keep church and state separate. How are we going to keep sports and 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 the state separate? So I, I think that they they should be doing these things, but it all goes down to economics again, you know. So I'm going to give Ice Cube a thumbs up. You know, when you're dealing with racism, racism is 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 going to be here. It's like a pebble in your shoe. You're going to always feel it. You can walk with it. It's like I having agree. a rock in your shoe, and you're going to feel it. But I'm going to give a thumbs up to Ice Cube. Listen. When you're dealing with racism and you're playing in their games, they can always say, give me my ball back. I'm not playing anymore. So if you really want to make a political statement, start your own damn league then. Why are you so committed to the NBA? Start your own league. We Listen, as black people, yeah, it's racist, but there is, we have had, they're talking about 40 million black people. There is enough black people in this country to where we could have made some type of significant economic difference in this country. And one of the reasons why we don't do, I guess that's a subject for, for, for another show, but I would just say this, do like the Negro League did in baseball. Start your own league, you can do what you want. We already had that situation with Donald Sterling uh, back in, you know, what, seven, eight years ago when he said he didn't want blacks attending his thing. We should have boycotted then. Not because of what Donald Sterling said, 
but to bring attention to the master slave relationship that is prevalent in all sports. So we okay. want to get this monkey okay, off so our back. Okay, so Dr. Yeah. Um, Dr. McClendon, one commentator said that, well, not scratch that. Craig Hodges, you guys remember Craig Hodges from the Absolutely. Chicago Bulls basketball franchise. He said that back in the day when Rodney King got beat down, that he approached Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson and asked both of those guys to protest, very similar to what we see now. Both of them said, you must be out of your mind. Mm -hmm. Was Craig Hodges too critical of those guys? Hodge is my guy, man. You know, he's been on my show several times. Hodge is a good guy. Hodge knew that those guys had a lot to lose monetarily with their sponsorships and endorsements. Uh, when Hodge went to the White House and wore that African all white garb and whispered something to the president, to I believe President Bush at that time, uh, mm -hmm. President Bush, or I believe it was President Bush one of the presidents at that time, that's when he got blackballed from the league. It could have been president, right. you know, and, and see, so, so, so here's the deal, man. Uh, you judge a man by how he will be looked upon as an ancestor. All right. And so what you do is, you know, it's, it's classic Maximus in a uh, gladiator. What you do today will echo throughout history. And okay, so, so Kenny Smith, Kenny Smith on TN on uh, TNT, the day that this happened, he actually got up, walked off live TV. Now, when he walked off, Shaquille O'Neal and Charles Barkley were sitting at the same table. Attorney Jackson, what do you think of that? Do you think that those two guys should have joined him? No, see, I'm, I'm really big on letting everybody make their own decision on what works for them. Everyone's method of creating change. Everyone's methodology does not have to match. And I really hate the division that is caused when someone says, well, Craig Hodges did it this way, or Kenny did it that way. Why don't you do it the same way? All four of us on this show right now, we all have different ways of expressing and making change. And I really don't like it when people try to say, well, you should have done exactly what Kaepernick did or what Ali did. No, do whatever is best for you, as far as how you see you can make a change, don't criticize how other people do it. So I, I don't I don't think that, man, Shaquille should have done the same thing. Or even Ice Cube saying, you shouldn't play for the NBA. You should start your own league. That's easy for Ice Cube to say because he already owns his own league. So maybe that's a little self-serving. Yeah, but as Malcolm, everyone has. Yeah, but as Malcolm X said, he said, the four of us on this panel, we're not judged because we're a Mason or an Elk. We're not judged because of our occupation. We're not judged right. because we're Catholic or Protestant or Muslim. We're judged because we're black men. And the minute the four of us spread out and become disunited, all four of us will become oppressed. Now, that's a good point. However, since every one of us have our own opinions, our own thoughts and ideas and experiences, how do you not spread out and just have do your own thing, have your own ideas, criticize one another? Uh, W.E.B. B. Dubois criticized Booker T. Washington. Malcolm X criticized Martin Luther King. Uh, uh, so the list goes on and on. All leaders are going to criticize the other leader and, and I don't mean criticize in terms of, you know, they should 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 or should not do it, but they're going to critique, for lack of a better right. word. Oh, yeah. And there's a, there's an infinite number of ways to move the ball forward. So if someone is trying to move the ball forward in a way that's a little bit different than your way, I would watch I would watch critiquing that. I also just wanted to just throw this out there as an idea. I'm a big proponent of taking over stuff from other people. Maybe maybe I learned that too much from white folks. We're always like, let's start our own. Why don't we take theirs? Like, why, why do we have to stay? They wouldn't have any problem taking it from you. Why don't you take theirs and make it yours? I'm just throwing that out there. Maybe that's another topic for another day. You don't have to start from scratch. However, Conquer. Be, be the conqueror that you are. Take it. However you can do it. There are enough multimillionaire athletes black athletes out there, enough multimillionaire black entertainers out there to start your own and take over and do whatever. So That's I it. agree. So, I mean, if, you, if you're upset with the program, get your own program. Yes, I agree. 
I, I think that's a very good point, Jeremiah, that um, we do have enough athletes. We do have enough people of high net worth who can do those things and start our own leagues. I do want to give a shout out or kudos to all those athletes out there, though, LeBron James. Uh, of course, we know uh, Muhammad Ali and John Carlos and and uh, all those good guys who are out there that are fighting for the cause and that are helping. In other words, these people are using their platform to let their voice be heard in the fight for social justice. And I think that's an amazing thing. Um, we're out of time on the quit list for today. We need to find out if you guys want to hit it or quit it. Hit it says yes. Quit it says no. Uh, I'm going to go to Attorney Jackson. What do you think? Should NBA players keep their mouth shut and just dribble? No, they have they have to quit keeping their mouth shut. I think that they should feel free and feel strong and empowered to speak their truth wherever they are. Quit that old coonery and go ahead and speak up as, as comfortable as you feel. Jeremiah. I agree. Quit it. You know, speak up. Do what you want, but start your own. Start your own. That way you don't have to ask somebody. You have to be worried about what you can and what you can't say. Get your own thing. Ger um, Dr. Gerard McClendon, what do you think? Yeah. Hit it or quit it? Yeah, quit. Machiavelli, real power is power that you take. And as Edwidge Dante Kai said, speak now because tomorrow you may be silenced. <laughs> All right. We appreciate you guys today on the quit list. We've been joined by our guest, attorney Gavin Jackson, Esquire. Thank you for being in the house. Jeremiah Kamara, Dr. Gerard McClendon. We appreciate you guys. We'll see you right back here next week on the quit list. All right. Camped out at home for COVID? Join us, Indie TV where you will see the talk shows, movies, drama, action, and comedy. Be the first and see it first. Sign up now for free at NDTV.